What's up guys and welcome to another video in Wild Kinetics. My name is Elam and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to build the simplest go-kart there is with the, I guess you could say, the least amount of materials. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button in order for me to keep posting more videos like this and drop a like also on this video and share this video with everyone else. Now without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to show you guys the materials you need first. So this is basically the simplest a go-kart can get. Like some of them can get really, um, complicated with their steering systems and brakes and clutches and gears and all that this is basically a simple push go-kart that you can like you know go down a hill with so what you need is basically you're going to need two of these pieces of scrap wood and ideally you want them to be kind of like u-shaped you want them to have this channel in order for the rod or the shaft to actually fit through so that way you don't have to um, make too much holes so you're going to need two of these these are a little more than 36 inches or three feet um you're going to need two of those next you're going to need a big piece of wood like this it is about 15 inches by more than three feet actually no exactly three feet so 15 inches by 36 inches um and it is about half an inch um thick and i've already tried this go-kart out so it is pretty stable but i wouldn't recommend you know putting too much force on it um, next you're going to need um, some nuts so here are five nuts um, I'm gonna be using 5 8 inch tires so these are 5 8 inch nuts and 5 8 inch lock washers you're gonna need five of these normal nuts with this normal spacer and you're going to need two nylon nuts for the outside front wheels next you're going to need these tires right here so um, I just had two of these for the back and two of these for the front. These are 10 inch pneumatic tires that you inflate at 30 PSI that you can probably get at a hardware store. Next you're going to need two of these rods. These are 36 inch long 5 8 inch rods. Since we're using these tires they have a 5 8 inch bore so you have to basically do everything 5 8 of an inch. I also forgot to mention that there are two more nuts that you need so it's not uh, five nuts, but seven nuts right here because there are two nuts also for the back and two additional Lock washers for the back too. You're also going to need um, These wood screws you're gonna need them pretty uh, Wide so that way they actually stick in the wood good and it does it isn't too loose So you're going to need about one two and then three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12. You're going to need about 12 of these screws in order uh, for this project. Now, as for the tools, you're going to need two monkey wrenches. These are mainly for just screwing in uh, the wheels into the go kart. You're going to need a saw, any like, you know, like a jigsaw, a circular saw, a manual saw, whatever works, whatever can cut. You're going to need a ruler to measure out everything. You're going to need pencils to basically measure out where you're going to cut the wood and you're going to need a 5 8 inch drill bit with a drill obviously um this we didn't have a drill bit that was specifically 5 8 of an inch but this drill bit basically cuts wood more than 5 8 of an inch and can calculate where you can cut the wood to 5 8 of an inch and the second last thing you're going to need is this small bolt it is about 12 inches 8 to 12 inches that you're going to use for your steering and last but not least you're going to need this rope um for steering because um, if you just use your legs it's very unstable this is 300 pound rope I would recommend using sturdy rope so that way it doesn't break when you're handling the go-kart so now let's get started building what you want to do first is you want to take your uh, piece of wood and you want to basically cut it to 24 inches so I measured out right here with my ruler. I measured out 24 inches right here with my pencil and my ruler. And then I'm going to cut it with the saw right here. Once I've done that, I take this remaining piece and I center it on here and then screw it on. Now that the wood has been cut, we have our long 24 inch piece and this leaves us with a 13 and a half inch piece too. We're going to be using these two pieces for the back of the go-kart. 
So I basically marked out where the half or the midpoint of this big piece is and the same for the small piece and I will line them up and then this is how they're going to be screwed together for the back part of the go-kart. And then as you can tell, I oriented them so the U channel faces are facing each other and not away from each other so that way the axle is able to fit through like this. It may seem a bit wobbly but it's actually pretty stable for a go-kart, a really simple go-kart too. So when this is screwed together, now we can move on to the front. This is uh, what the finished front part would look like, so I'll walk you through it. So this is about an inch uh, to two inches of the another piece of wood that has been cut. Uh, just to let you know, this piece of wood is between two and two and a half inches. Uh, yeah, around two and a half inches, just to give you guys a perspective if you're ordering wood or buying wood. Um, I took two of these uh, that are about the same and put them each on the ends. As you can see, it's not the most perfectly aligned uh, thing, but you know it works for basically a makeshift go-kart. This piece right here is longer. It is 29 inches. The reasoning behind this is, this is since this is the front steering part, this is where you're going to be putting uh, your feet to steer the vehicle. So you're going to have want to have space for your feet to actually uh, fit in the places where you want to steer the vehicle. Here we have a big hole, so like I said before, we use the 5 8 inch drill bit to drill a hole through right here. Um, but the catch in this hole is that it can't be big enough to make the bolt slide through. You have to kind of force the bolt through the hole and make sure it's screwed in, because as you can tell, I can't move this bolt at all. Um, it has to be centered on the piece of wood. It has to be at the midpoint of the length and the midpoint of the width of the piece of wood and then you have your um, front piece. The, the bolt also cannot go through the U-channel. That's why it only goes halfway through this piece of wood instead of all the way through, because when you put your axle, if you make it go all the way through, then it won't fit in your axle. After you have uh, attached both pieces, both the front and the back pieces, you want to now attach them to the main uh, base board. So. Once again, this is 15 inches by 36 inches. And we're going to attach the back piece in the back with two screws. Like I showed you before, it's a basic wood screw that you can get at your local hardware store that you screw it through. This piece of wood is, again, half an inch thick, which should be enough to hold maybe up to maybe even a 180 pound, 200 pound person. After that, it would be pushing it a little bit, but um, this should be enough. If you are Maybe a heavier person, I would recommend putting a piece of wood here beneath that uh, screws in under the piece of wood uh, in order to basically strengthen it like as a kind of a crossbar to strengthen it. But you've got to attach the screws here and make sure that they are on tight and they are centered. Also notice that there are breaks in the wood here. Make sure you don't screw the, um, the screws close to these breaks of wood. Make sure you screw them as far away as possible and make sure you don't screw them too close to the edges either because you don't want the piece of wood to splinter off. After you have attached the back piece, now it's time to insert the front piece. So what I did here is I drilled the hole about two inches, uh, one and a half to two inches away from the edge of the board and in the center of the width of the piece of wood uh, to ensure that it doesn't you know break off the piece of wood um, and it's not too close either to the um, to the center of the piece of wood to provide balance so we just put our rod through so our threaded rod through uh, just to let you know uh, this has to be bigger than the actual rod so what I mean by that is that it has to be kind of go through smoothly so that way it can turn smoothly as you can tell the go-kart is turning now in the axis and then now the next step is to put on the two shafts now you need four of each of the 5 8 inch regular steel nut and 5 8 inch lock washers to put into each um, each section or each end of the uh, rods or the shafts of the go-kart so since you want to, this to probably be centered really good, you're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure off um, a certain amount. So if you're going with the measurements that I'm doing right now where this rod is 29 inches and this rod is 24 inches, the measurement for here 
is going to be four inches away from the edge of the piece of wood and then it should be equal and for the end section it should be about five to five and a half inches and then once you have that measured out as you can see it's pretty much centered on both ends I can go check to see just to make sure yep it's measured out here just let me just move that a little forward there now that it's basically centered out on the front and the back you start putting in your nut you want to put in your pressure washer first and then your nut to make sure that uh, they don't slide around too much these nuts are to ensure that the uh, shaft doesn't move around as much so you do that The next step is to um, uh, basically fasten your steering right here. So you want to take a washer, 5 8 inch steel washer, put that right down there, and you want to take your nut and screw it in basically um, through the bolt. And this is definitely not going to be screwed in tightly, but it's not going to be able to unscrew itself to the point where it would be too dangerous because gravity is going to keep it where it is. So just screw it in until it's almost just touching, barely touching the washer, but it can, it's still able to rotate maybe even a little more like that. And it can still rotate like that and that's it's pretty sturdy. The final step is to then attach the tires, the back tires and then the front tires. The front tires are kind of special since they uh, basically unscrew themselves easier than the back tires so we're going to be using this nylon nut right here that has uh, nylon on the outside on the tippy top so that way it when it screws in it's going to stay there it's going to stay screwed into the rod and it's not going to unscrew itself unlike the regular nut but for the back tires you're just going to be using regular nuts with lock washers you're going to put in your tire with this hub in facing inwards like this. Put it through like this and then you're going to um, take your, uh, your lock washer and your normal hex nut and you're gonna screw them in. For the tires, you don't want to screw them in to the point where they're super tight because if you do that, then they're not gonna be able to turn at all. So screw it in. Uh, just like the steering to the point where it's not extremely tight but to the point where they can move so to test that out you just screw it in until you feel like it's tight enough and then you just pick up the wheel and turn it so this is okay um, it's not too tight it's not too loose and it's okay for the uh, front wheel also remember you have to put in your rope since I've already made two loops at the end of the rope I just put them in I was just gonna put them in here on each side before I put in my front tires just to save time now it's time for the test run I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to drop a big like, comment down below on any other videos I should make, and share this video with your friends and family. And don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button in order for me to keep posting videos. I appreciate you guys for all your support. And as always, thank you for watching.